Welcome to SST College of Arts and Commerce. You are watching SST Edupedia. In this lecture, we are going to learn poverty alleviation programs. This topic is for the TY BAP students having the subject Economics Paper 3, that is Indian Economy. I am Assistant Professor Varsha Savlani. In this video, poverty alleviation programs are introduced by central government and state government these programs has a main aim to generate the employment to create the self-employment to have the help to the poor people in the rural areas as well as in the urban areas so poverty alleviation programs are nothing but the steps taken by the government to have the economic and humanitarian development by eradicating the poverty from the country. Now this anti-poverty programs are mainly run by the central government. As I said the alleviation programs are helps to the generating the employment for the rural work, for self-employment, for providing food subsidy, for providing awas yojana that is housing facilities these various benefits or we can say under various different schemes the government is helping the poor people the first scheme initial six schemes we will do of employment generation the first scheme is mahatma gandhi national rural employment guaranteed scheme now this scheme was introduced on September 2005. Under this scheme, the guarantee was given of 100 days employment. State wise, the wage rate is differ. Like in Maharashtra state, the wages are 248 wages per day is given to the worker under this scheme. In the current or we can say in the previous financial year 21-22, 6.51 crores of persons have been provided employment under this scheme and approximately of amount of rupees 41 lakhs crore has been released in the previous financial year for the implementation of this scheme. That is Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. The next scheme is National Rural Livelihood Mission, NRLM. Earlier it was Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana and now it is called it as Ajivika. The very beginning Swarna Jayanti Gram Swarozgar Yojana was introduced on 1st April 1999. With the aim is to enable the poor households to access a gainful self-employment and a skilled wages employment opportunities. The later on it has been restructured as NRLM that is National Rural Livelihood Mission. Currently, since we can say since 2011, currently it is called it as Ajivika. Under this scheme, the cost is in the sharing ratio of 75 is to 25. That is 75% is sponsored by the central government and rest 25% is sponsored by the state government. The third policy is Sampurna Gramin Rozgar Yojana. Again, Rozgar means creating the employment. The scheme was introduced by the government on September, in September 2001. The main aim of introducing this scheme is additional wages employment additional wages employment along with the food security creation of durable community as well as the social and economic asset or infrastructure development in the rural areas the cost of the scheme is bared in the ratio of 75 to 25 means 75 percent by the central and 25 percent by the state now it is a part of National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. This scheme is a part of National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Next scheme is Rural Employment Generation Program. Now this scheme was introduced on 1st April 1995 as 
the Khadi Village, Khadi and Village Industries Commission. The main objective of this scheme is self-employment opportunities in small towns and villages. The scheme generates job opportunities for around 2 million job seekers under Khadi and Village Industries in the rural areas of our country. Next is Prime Minister Rozgar Yojana. It was started in 1993. The main purpose is to provide employment to the educated unemployed youth by setting the micro enterprises by the educated unemployed poor. The main aim is self-employment ventures for industries, services and businesses. The next scheme is Swarna Jayanti Shahari Rozgar Yojana that is SJSRY. This scheme was came into effect from 1st December 1997. The main aim is to provide gainful employment to the urban unemployed and underemployed poor by encouraging them to have their self-employment ventures and provisions of the wages employment. This scheme has been revised by having the five main components. The first component is urban self-employment program. The second component is urban women self-help group SHGs. The third is step up that is skill training for employment promotions amongst the urban poor. And the next scheme is urban wages employment program and the fifth component is urban community development program. These are the five components has been revised under the Swarna Jayanti Shahari Rozgar Yojana. Again this scheme is implemented for the cost sharing ratio of 75 is to 25 that is 75 percent is sponsored by the central and 25 percent sponsored by the state government. The next scheme is Pradhan Mantri Gramodaya Yojana. Under this scheme, the objective is to achieve sustainable human development at the village level. And this scheme was came into effect from 2000-2001 in the states as well as in the union territories. Initially, it was focused in the five critical areas that is health, education, rural sector, rural drinking water and nutrition. Now it has also been added as a rural electrification. The additional component under the scheme is rural electrification. Okay. Which scheme? Pradhan Mantri Gramodaya Yojana. The next scheme is Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarak Yojana. This Yojana was launched on 25th December 2000. The main objective is road connectivity to the unconnected villages of India. Under this scheme, it is aims at better connectivity and transportation in the villages which are deserving, which deserve the development, which grows so many crops. So for that purpose, there should be a proper connectivity and transportation services. Around 1,70,000 roads of 7,12,000 approximately kilometers is been connected under the scheme and approximately 7,000 bridges have been constructed under the Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarak Yojana which came into effect from 2000. The next scheme is Indira Avas Yojana. This scheme was launched from 1999-2000, the aim is to provide dwelling units free of cost to the poor families of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, free based laborers, free bonded laborers and even to the non scheduled caste and non scheduled tribes, those who are under the below poverty line. Approximately 16,000 crores is been allocated under the construction of 25, under the construction of various dwelling houses 
and 25 lakhs houses has been constructed. Next scheme is Valmiki Ambedkar Awas Yojana. This scheme was launched by the Prime Ministers on 2nd December 2001. The main aim is to improve the condition of the urban slum dwell houses by improving the facilities like construction, upgradation of these dwelling houses. So far, 590 crores has been allocated and approximately 2,13,000 dwelling units as well as other things has been constructed in this scheme. The cost has been shared in the ratio of 50-50, that is 50% 50 is sponsored by the central government, rest 50 is state government. The next scheme is related providing food subsidy under the scheme Annapurna. This scheme was introduced on 1st April 2000. The main aim is to provide food security, especially to the senior citizens who are eligible and they are uncovered under the National Old Age Pension Scheme. Providing food grains at a very reasonable or subsidized rate to the senior citizens. And it is 100% sponsored by the central government. The next scheme is Anta Yodha Anna Yojana. This scheme again was introduced by the Prime Minister on 25th December 2000. The aim is to provide highly subsidized food, especially the wheat, rice, that is 2 rupees per kg and 3 rupees per kg respectively, to the poor families, those who are under PDS, that is public distribution system. Initially, 25 kilograms or we can say kgs, food grain was made available to each family. Now, it has been increased to 35 kgs per family. This Antiyodha Anna Yojana was expanded to cover 2.5 crores poorest of the poor families. The next scheme is National Food for Works program. This National Food for Works program was launched on 14th November 2004 in 150 backward districts of our country to generate supplementary wages employment. This program is open to all the Indian poors who are ready to do manual unskilled labor work. This food grains are also provided to the state free of cost. The state government has to bear the transportation cost, handling cost and other things or other responsibility related to storage. So all these are the schemes was introduced to eradicate the poverty from our country because that is a major problem which we are facing yet we called it as a under or we can say still we are in a developing session, developing stage. We have not yet been developed as a country because many people are still in BPL below poverty line. So to remove this poverty the government introduce so many schemes to develop those rural areas also. Thank you.